Okay, on the UK Cigar Box Guitar Forum, there's been a sort of discussion thread about how to put one of these, a piezo stomper box, through your amplifier. Now, what I want to do is to propose an alternative solution. One of the difficulties is the fact that most guitar amps have just got a single input. Now, if you look at this little thing, you can see we've actually got four channels and you can actually put eight uh, inputs into this you can see the size of it compared to my hand it's very small this is a very simple mixing desk this is a behringer uh what's this a ub802 i think it's been superseded by the Zenix line but here's the thing i bought this for 35 pounds this has been all over the uk all over europe Glastonbury with me and Hollabaddy touring and doing gigs. I team that up with this. That's just a powered PA speaker. Just one. You don't need two of them. Two is a conventional setup, but uh, I'll say me and Hollabelly have done plenty of gigs where the venue was so small there was only room one of those for one of these, and we'd say sit on the in on the bench in the pub. Put that speaker on the bench, and that's it. There's 200 watts of power there. Now, I've seen the... I've paid about 100 quid for this, and I've seen these recently uh, on eBay, second-hand refurbished, for less than 100 quid. This is a, a Behringer... Um, I think it's called a Euro 210, I think. It's a 10-inch powered speaker. The powered bit is the important thing. There's 200 watts output on that this little thing the mixing desk isn't an amplifier it's got preamps to shape your sound but it's not got any power so the combination is one of these and a speaker as an alternative to using a guitar amp may not suit everybody but if you're interested in sort of like doing the one-man band thing and getting a, a sort of kick drum sound your guitar and um, a stomper, this is one way to do it. The setup is very, very simple. You've got a power input. You've got a power input. Plugs into the back, and you can see the little lights light up. We connect that to the speaker with just a jack socket, and it goes in here. You can see there's two outputs left and right. We're only going to use one. If we just go back over to the speaker, turn that over on the back. You can see the back. So we've got a power input and that's our cable going in. These are quite flexible because you can uh, use a, a three pin, the XLR or Canon co uh, connector. There's your power. The light comes on and there's a red overload light. You've also got treble and bass control on here and the and an overall volume control. So you've got a bit of control on there. I'll just turn that off so I don't get any unwanted pops and hums or whatever. Okay, and so this is our mixing there. So that's, con that's connected to the speaker. Got power onto our speaker, power on here. Okay, what else have we got? We've got our stomper board and we've just got a jack lead coming out of that. And if I can find the other end of that, I'll connect it up. Okay. Before you plug anything in, always turn down the main volume. So we can plug that into any of these channels, but we've got this set up here. In this channel, number two, because you can see it's written, we've got... Uh, vox vocals kick and stomp because we sometimes use a, uh, a kick drum sometimes use a stomper this time i'm going to put the stomper through here i'm going to put the guitar through here so that's my kick my stomper sorted out and if you look you've got controls on here the overall level 
Pan, that's whether it's left or right speak, it doesn't matter. Effects, we've not got any effects on this board. But what we have done is put the bass up and the mid and the treble down. Okay, the gain, don't worry about that, we'll set that in the middle. That's a sort of an additional volume control. It shouldn't really treat it as a volume control, but there you go. That's that. Now, microphone, we're going to plug in here. And for that, you'll see we've got a different sort of connector. This is a three pin. It's an XLR, sometimes known as a Canon. And that goes in there into my microphone channel and it connects in here. I've got a fancy lit up Art Deco Heil microphone, but it's got the equipment, it's got the other connector on the other end, another three pin. This is the sort of microphone that, this is what you want. A Shure SM58, very robust that's really the industry standard and as you can see it's got the corresponding three pin connector on there you cannot go wrong with one of those they are pretty well bomb proof and then the other thing we need to do is connect the guitar in and we just need a lead from our guitar we can go direct from the guitar into whatever spare channel we've got and that just plugs in so with our guitar we can put it into we can put it into we can put the guitar into this channel and we've got the volume our tone controls that will give us a clean sound if you want you could put an overdrive pedal uh, on that plug your guitar into that and then take that out to the desk or a really neat trick if you've got an amp like this, like the Roland Microcube, and I think the Vox little ones have got the same thing. We've got our settings on here, whatever we want for the for our, our basic uh, sound and any effects. But round the back, there's a handy jack socket which is labelled um, record out slash phones, and we just take a jack from that. That's just an angled jack. From there, and you put that into the desk. So whatever effects you've got on there, it's going to go through your desk. And instead of it being your measly 3 watts through your microcube, you've got 200 watts coming out of your powered speaker. Okay, another thing which um, somebody was talking about was uh, DI box. Uh, direct input or direct injection what this will do uh, is improve the signal from your piezo stomper piezo stomper which you have plugged in here has got a very high impedance but what you can do plug it in here and then take an xlr cable from there That's our XLR there, and we can plug in on the desk with an XLR. Don't force these, you need to get them. So there, and then that will give us a much better balanced signal from your DI box. It's not essential. It's another bit of complication, another bit more expense. Um, I carry one just in case a lot of PA uh, guys like to use one they'll have them but it does give you a bit more sort of clean headroom but it it will work without it going straight into your desk i say this was very cheap i saw one of these the other day 19 quid on ebay i think the new model is called the xenix and uh, and you can get more sophisticated ones where you've got additional channels where you've got effects built into them and a new queue but the price does go up a lot. Not really necessary. It's nice to have it, but you don't really, really need it. That with, you know, compare, combined with that speaker, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who diss the, the Behringer brand. It's German designed, made in China. 
you know, it's entry-level stuff, but it's cheap, pretty durable. Okay, I hope that's been of some help. You know, the alternative of doing a little PA setup instead of trying to cram everything through a guitar amp. Okay, bye for now.